guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Yasmin. Today I'm going to be talking to you about hormonal acne, my hormonal acne story and how I cured it to have clear skin. So I don't have a photo of how my skin looked before when I had the hormonal acne. I just don't. It was a lot worse than the photo that you have seen in my thumbnail of this. That photo in my thumbnail was something that happened recently where I was using a sunscreen on my face that had a paraben preservative in it and keeping in mind it was a zinc sunscreen and it gave me an allergic reaction in which made my skin break out. As soon as I stopped this particular sunscreen, my skin cleared up. But if you can imagine that, that those pimples as a bigger size. So my hormonal acne started around the age of 21. Um, before then I had really, really clear skin. I tried proactive and that just bleached my towel as well as a whole bunch of other skin treat, like skin things. At this particular stage also, I was not diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome. No one knew that I had it. I knew that something was up, but I was given a prescription for minamycin and I took minamycin a couple of times. Minamycin is an antibiotic specifically for acne and it's a little bit different to Roaccutane. Um, it doesn't peel the skin. I had no adverse side effects from it. They do say though that to try, to try and avoid the sun when you are using Minamycin, in which I always use an SPF anyway. So the, the Minamycin did clear my acne, but it's a long time that you're on antibiotics. Like each cycle is for about six months worth. It's a long time, but I didn't. Again, I do believe that that is a lot better than Roaccutane. Roaccutane also, if you ever take it and you're trying to have a baby or you want to have a baby, you have to be off it for a certain period of time. Your skin peels, your lips peel, like everything. It's really hardcore medication. Um, the other thing that I did do to kind of help it was I did get microdermabrasion with the crystal head. There is crystal head microdermabrasion and diamond head microdermabrasion. I was getting crystal head microdermabrasion every single week until it kind of like went clearer again and then I cut it back to about every two weeks. But that microdermabrasion, I swear by it. People then started to even compliment my skin. They were saying to me, what have you done to your skin? Your skin's really gray and everything. And I just couldn't believe it that I had come from this cystic acne to having you know, skin that people complimented me about. Occasionally, if I got that time of the month, I would get like the one pimple and always I would get it on the, usually on the right side as well. You can't probably see my skin straight up, but I do have slight acne scarring just on this particular cheek and none on the other side or none that's everywhere else. The main place that I got the acne was all on this right side. And when they discovered that I had PCOS, when they were doing ultrasounds on me, my right ovary was always more active than my left ovary. And then what happens when those with the is the cysts on the cysts and immature follicles on the ovary release more androgen. So it kind of like I thought to myself, is that why my right side is worse than my left? I didn't know. But yeah, this side here I was really, really bad. I used to pick it. Don't ever pick your pimples. Don't ever try to pop them. Just go and see a dermatologist or a you know a specialist to get the right treatment done. I thought I wouldn't scar like I had no pimples as a teenager. My mother had no pimples I wasn't brought up like in a house so I, like I knew not to, not to pop them but I didn't see any bad scarring growing up that I just thought it's just a myth right but no it does scar your skin I did get like little pock marks in there and we're going to go into how I treated those later so when I got when you know they were on clear and everything and then I got diagnosed with the PCOS and I was put on metformin my skin has not broken out again since I have been on metformin I'll usually get like one or two about the time you know before my period or once when I've ovulated and then again it's usually the side I've ovulated on and the only other time I've broken out really badly was that photo that you have in that which was recently because it was an allergic reaction now a very tiny small and then as soon as I just stopped using it then it all just kind of went away so I was left with these little like acne scarring just on this right cheek here. So I did a session of fractional CO2 laser and I can tell you that it was probably the most traumatic event of my life. It was horrible, but you know what? It pretty well fixed the job. So she, I did fractional CO2 laser by Pearl and yeah, like it was hardcore. And I not only did my face, I did my face, neck and chest. It was hardcore. I looked like I'd stuck my face in a blow, like in an oven, and it had like, here is a photo of 
I'm just gonna say this, if you feel queasy in any kind of way, you don't like, just fast forward a little bit in this, because here is a photo of me, and this isn't even bad, this is like a little bit healed after quite a few days of what it really looks like, okay? <laughs> yeah, fractional is a really hardcore thing, but you know what, it is really for acne scarring and other kinds of scarring. So, I don't know, I would do it as a last resort, but yeah. Since then, I get like other forms of laser which are not a lot more gentle and don't have the downtime to go along with that. They aren't as much to do with the scarring per se, but they do actually, I don't know, they help my skin out a lot. So usually once or twice a year, I will get like a, a BBL like, like a BBL done or a Genesis done. Again, these are not for the acne scarring, but I do believe that they're really good for acne prevention anyway. So I do get those done like a treatment like every single year just to kind of maintain that fractional laser what I also had had done was skin needling now skin needling is good for acne and acne scarring it's when they have them do you remember that when Kim Kardashian put like the vampire blood all over her thing so I have done a few of those as well but what I've also done is I've had the nurse who did it get like a needle and as well as like needling my face is inside the scarring actually deep needle and prick because when they put the needle in it we, we could hear it like it will crack the scar open from underneath like inside those little like ones in here and as you can see it's not it's not that bad anymore like it's my skin is like nothing I guess if you see it in the sun or anything I've taken photos and it's not that noticeable compared to what it was um, back before do I get breakouts now no Really, hormonal acne is just that hormonal. And once you fix your hormones, the rest of it will heal itself. So I recommend that you go see your dermatologist to get the external stuff, you know, go see your dermatologist to get the external stuff done, but you really need to do investigative work is to see what's going on in the inside of you that's causing the outside to present the way that is presenting. Because I can tell you, to develop acne at an, as an adult isn't normal. Like, it's not normal, you know? Like, when kid, when, pe when teenagers get acne as a teenager, it's just that, like, it's caused by hormones and the surge in hormones in the body going, woo, like everything's going on and the changes. So, if this happens as an adult, there's something going on with your hormones because you're well and truly out of puberty as an adult. Like you're well and like you're well past that. That really need to go see an endocrinologist, which is a specialist to do with the hormones as to why. Even now, I go to see my endocrinologist and he always asks me, how's your skin? Is your skin breaking out? I'm like, no. But always, always check with them first and then go see your dermatologist to get the external stuff done because you don't want scarring. I was like picking these for, you know, like every time because I hated it. It was like, oh, Oh my gosh and I couldn't do it. like I did that you know it was you know made sure like made sure my pillowcase was always clean didn't wear always wore my hair up so my hair wasn't going didn't touch my face and it wasn't that these were deep big cystic pimples anyway I know just stay positive but see those two per, so two specialists an endocrinologist and a dermatologist consider minamycin over Roaccutane and a really good skincare. Try to avoid things with parabens in there, which, like for myself, I didn't even, you know, they're not actually, like, things say paraben free on them, and this particular one did not say paraben free, but it was literally zinc oxide and one preservative. That was it. Until I like Googled that preservative and found out that it was a paraben, I was like, oh my gosh. And I haven't really had that kind of a reaction to anything ever before, ever. Like I've had burning sensation from some things, but I've never had a product make myself like completely break out. So anyway, guys, all the best. I know you can do it and I know your skin will improve. Mine, you wouldn't probably think that I was an acne sufferer, but yes, I was an acne sufferer as an adult. But if you like this video, please make sure to subscribe and give me a thumbs up with the bell notification. Bye.